In earlier videos, we've actually looked at the edit toolbar, and I'll just draw your attention to it. And particularly, we've looked at the comment block, the uncomment block, the outdent, and the indent. But there's also a bookmark button, which could be quite useful. The whole idea here is I can actually click on a statement and I can toggle a bookmark. And this little cyan symbol appears to the left of the statement. I might also click here and add another bookmark, and I could click here and add another bookmark. Basically, they're places that I want to mark, much like you bend the corner of a page in a book, they're places I want to mark to come back to for whatever reason. So if I'm not sure about something, I might bookmark it. And then the whole idea is no matter where I'm sitting, these other buttons now have lit up, and I can choose the next bookmark button when I want to the next and the next and the next bookmark. And I can click this button when I want to go to the previous, the previous bookmark. And this button here will clear all bookmarks. So I'll just clear them all. So bookmarks can be quite useful too. You'll find as you start auditing um, code, now let's look at the modules themselves. In your Project Explorer, you have a modules folder, and here it is here, this yellow folder. And when I look at this modules folder, there is only one module in this file called module one. And in fact, I should have renamed that earlier to mod chapter one. Using the properties window and using the name property, I can name that module mod chapter one and that now appears in the modules folder. A word of advice I would actually add the three letters mod in front of whatever you name the module and I would keep the spaces out of the name as well. The reason being sometimes you may accidentally call the module the same name as a macro and if you do that you'll have some ambiguity in your VBA and that'll cause errors. So it's just a good habit to put mod in front of whatever you name the module. Now, the thing is, when you're looking at a module in this one that we have here, one module can, can contain one sub-procedure or one module can contain many sub-procedures. And this one module actually contains one, two, three, four, four sub-procedures. And you can actually even see them listed over here in this drop-down. This tells me there's one, two, three, four sub-procedures in this particular module. And I can jump to remove grid or I can jump to format currency and my cursor is just jumping to the relevant module, which is really handy when they're big modules. You've also got two ways of viewing modules. Now down here in the left of the code window are two buttons. The first one's actually called Procedure View, and when I click it, what that does is narrow my viewing to just that one procedure. And so it looks like I've lost the other three, but it allows you to focus on one sub-procedure and not accidentally fall into another. When you want to see all the sub-procedures back, you hit the second of those two buttons called Full Module View, and then I can see all the um, sub-procedures. If I click on Convert to Values and go again to Procedure View, I'm just seeing the procedure, and if I choose Module View, I'm seeing all the sub-procedures in that module. So there's different ways to view your modules. Now inserting modules can be done in a variety of ways. If I want a second module, I could just go to Insert and choose Module in the menu. I could also hit the drop down on this button and choose Module. I think I could also right click and choose Insert Module. So there's a variety of ways you can insert modules. If I click on this module, I can then use the properties to call it maybe Mod Test. And so that's the name of that module. When you want to see what's in a module, you must double click. It's not sufficient to click once. I can't see what's in mod chapter 1 unless I double click. I can't see what's in mod test 2 unless I double click. So make sure you double click when you want to view what's in a module. You can easily select text in one module and copy it either by right clicking or going to the copy button on the standard toolbar or even going edit copy and control C as a shortcut key. So you can copy text from one module, double click another module, and paste it into another module. So now I've repeated those four sub-procedures in this module as well as in this module. You can just as easily delete a module. So I could right click perhaps mod test and I could remove that module, mod test. 
it will ask me do you want to export it before you remove it and I'll just say no so that's how you remove a module in fact that's how you insert a module rename a module and delete a module now what you'll often want to do also is export a module out to a separate file if I right click this particular module I can export this file and what it wants to do oops let me just bring that into view what it wants to do is create a BAS file which is a basic file short for Visual Basic so I might call it modchapter1.bas and I'll put it on my desktop and I'll save it so I've saved that module let's import that module so let's say I delete this particular module remove mod chapter one do you want to export no I've already done that and it's gone so this file now does not have any more code in it does not have a module in it so now I go to file and I import file and I choose the mod chapter one and open it if I then open with the plus my modules folder I can see there's a module in there called mod chapter one and if I double click it I can actually view what's inside that module so you can easily export code to a separate BAS file and you can import code as well